Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about stick control again, the stick control book. I think there are a lot of uh, confusion with a lot of new students, young or old, how to apply, uh, how to even study stick control. So other questions I've had also are how do I set the metronome to these studies? So if you look in your book, your stick control book, they are written in cut time. You see the C with the line. So common time with the C would be 4-4. Four, four. So beginning students, we could count this whole thing in one and two and three and four and one and two and so you could set your metronome at this tempo with eighth notes one and two and three and four and so on line let's just do line five that's the paradiddle that everyone knows so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and once you get the knack of it and you're ready to move on to cut time. There are only going to be two beats in that measure. So you have to get all that done in two counts. So now we have to count it as 16s. One E and a, two E and a. So whatever the sticking is, one E and a, two E and a, one E and a, two E and a, one E and a, two E and a. but you're still not going to be satisfied with that tempo. While you're learning and you're getting your hands and wrists and everything in motion, uh, you, you're wanting to get faster and faster and faster. You, you should progress up the ladder every week. You should mark your metronome settings at how fast you can do these on week one, week two, they better be faster because if they're not, you have a problem, you haven't, practiced enough or you haven't practiced the correct way to build that speed. You have to kind of push yourself. If you were running in a marathon and you wanted to be up in there with the top 10, you're not going to be the slowest one back there and just at a steady pace. You have to practice to push yourself through, through the pain. And so you're gonna have to do the, the same thing with playing drums. You can't just be satisfied with this speed. You have to push and push and push until you start sweating because you're straining and sweating and working. And that's the only way that you can do this. The only way that you can play fast around the kit is by working. You would look at a drummer when they come off stage. If you hug them, you would be like, oh, they are soaking wet. And me too. So I was like, no, don't touch me. I'm soaking wet every time I play because I'm playing with force and I'm using all my limbs. That's what you have to do. So let's take, uh, I've set my metronome here. This is the click metronome. I have it on 60 beats per minute right now. I have it on 60. And I have it on 16th notes. So there's two beats, one, two, one, two, because we are in cut time. So let's go back to line five again, just for a metronome kind of setting. And because this is a legitimate paradiddle, let's put the accent in instead of just playing it as written in the book. It is a legitimate paradiddle, paradiddle, paradiddle. Now you can go in here and take the 16th out and just put one click and you'll see how slow it is. So if you set your metronome, this is 60 beats per minute. One, two, one, 
two. That has to be played, that one for the measure, line five, the first measure and second measure. One, two, one, two, one, two. And 60 beats per minute is pretty slow because you will not be playing 60 beats per minute. You've got to get it up in the 120, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. You've got to get those things up. So that's telling you, you can't be satisfied with 60 beats per minute. You can if you're, you've never seen this before, you've never picked up sticks before, and you have not practiced for hours and hours and hours per day. If you're that new, yes, you're going to play it that slow, but you want to be able to increase your speeds, like I mentioned, weekly, daily, actually. Okay, so let's jump down to um, 33, number 33. The sticking for that is, let me pause that a minute. You've got pair a diddle and then pair diddle a. You're putting the diddle in the middle. So it's an inverted paradiddle. In this book, it doesn't tell you that. It's just giving you stickings, but you are going to play an inverted paradiddle. So you're gonna start with pair a diddle, pair diddle a, pair a diddle, pair diddle a, if you wanna count it that way. Or you can say one e and a, two e and a, one e and a, two e and a. So turn your metronome on. I would advise putting the 16ths in with it. That way you can hear each group that you're supposed to be playing along with. So now I'm going to bump it up for you just to give you an idea. That's 60. Let's bump it up to 100. That's 103 there. Okay, so we're still on number 33. what you can do with them. Let's go even higher. This is 133. Ah. I was trying to play them without accents. I'm used to used to accenting them. Sorry, I messed up. Okay, so going back, this is 16th at tempo 60. And then if you touch this, it'll show you that, the 60, it'll show you that they're in 16th. And I have it at 1-4. Instead of 2-4 beat per measure. That's weird. I don't know if you can see it or not. But it's on 1-4. You could put it on 2-4. And this is what it would sound like. 1-E e and a 2-E and a. So it's giving you the downbeat of each measure. Which is good. So you can do it either way. Okay, so click metronome. This, uh, this metronome is awesome. Okay, so this is my, kind of like my introduction to trying to help new students. I have some students from 
across the seas that are really interested in how to work on stick control and what to do with it. So, and helping them get the metronome settings. And I hope that this video answered some questions. So stay tuned. I'll keep putting more and more examples of what to do with all the different exercises in George Stones. It won't be uh, so explanatory as this video, but this is a uh, get started video. So look for more instruction coming up. Okay. All right. See you guys later.